in this video, we're going to talk about Riemann sums. So the first thing we will need to do is we will need to load a package into Maple. And this is done with the with command. Notice that I'm in math mode. I've typed in with open parenthesis students open bracket calculus one close bracket close parenthesis. And if you hit enter here, Maple will give you a lot of output. So it's loaded in all of these tutors and packages and whatnot. This clutters up our screen quite a bit and we don't want all this clutter. So to suppress the output, I will include a colon and hit enter and that cleaned that up. It still loaded all the packages though. Okay, so I need some commands for Riemann sums. To take a look at these, let's head over here to the Maple Help screen. And if you type in Riemann at the top in the search bar, it will bring up a bunch of topics. And if we go down here to student calculus one Riemann, that's the one that we want. Now, there's a lot of detail here about all the different options you could use, but let's scroll down to some sample code so that we can start playing around with how this works. So notice that they've called in the package and then they could do a basic Riemann sum with a given method like a lower or an upper sum, et cetera. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to explore some of these plots. All right, so I'm gonna copy that code over. And the function that I'm going to work with is actually the function two times X plus one. And I'm going to evaluate this as x goes from 1 to 2. And I'm going to use three rectangles. So the partition is going to be equal to 3. OK, so let's click on the plot and then use this bottom corner to drag out so that we can see more information. All right, so we have a nice little plot of our function. And we also are seeing the three rectangles. We see that these rectangles are using right-hand endpoints, and this was an overestimate of the area under the curve. We can see that down below the plot, there's a caption, and it says the approximate value of the integral is 7.3 repeating, and the number of subintervals used was 3. All right, let's try the same thing. This time I'm going to use a lower sum. So I'll type in lower. And again, I'm going to use three partitions. Oops. OK, so here we're using left hand endpoints. This is a lower sum. And this turned out to be 4.6 repeating. And then we can also go through here and we could increase the number of partitions. So let's go back to an upper sum and let's increase the number of partitions to 30. Well, that looks like a much better approximation because those little rectangles are picking up all of the nuances of the function uh, much nicer. So that estimate was 6.13 repeating. All right, so if we wanted to compute the exact area, that is done with an integral. And I'll make a little space here. To do the integral in Maple, we wanna be in math mode. And then on the left-hand side of the screen, you can scroll down to either the expression palette or you could scroll down here to the calculus palette. I'm going to do the integral, integral from x equals zero Oops, up to x equals two. And the function that I'm working on is two times x plus one. And this is an integral with respect to x. And the exact value there is six. Now, we could also use geometry. So let's plot our function. I'm going to be in math mode. And if we plot the function two times x plus one, as x goes from zero to two, 
we see that we actually have a trapezoid. And maybe I'll set my y limits here so we can see those more clearly. Y goes from 0 up to 5 is fine. So I'm interested in this area. This is a trapezoid. So let's make a note here. The area of a trapezoid is given by 1 half times base 1. So let's get the notation with the subscript in there. Plus base 2. times the height. So in our particular case, we have the area equal to 1 half. Now base 1 is the height of this left-hand vertical side of our figure. So that's 1. Base 2, the other base here, the bases, remember, are parallel sides of a trapezoid. That looks like it's at 5, right? When x equals 2, the y value there would be 5 times the height. And remember, the height is the component that is perpendicular to your two bases. So in this case, the height, if we turn our head sideways here, the height spans from 0 to 2. That's the component that's perpendicular to each of the bases of our trapezoid. And so if we work this out, that is 6. And we get the same answer whether we use the integral or we use geometry. And we can see the Riemann sums did a pretty good approximation and they got better with the greater number of rectangles that we took.